Okay. So uh, thank you everyone for be, be, being here. We do have a board quorum, uh, although we are missing Sally and Will from Capital Far, but I'm going to open the meeting at 7.02. And right off the bat, I just want to mention to Brent that as host, we don't start the Zoom recording because then it interferes with ORCAs. Something that I did last meeting and we want to not do again. Um, okay, the first thing up is the agenda. Any additions? I can read it. Read it. One is to talk about, about treasurer. treasurer, the audit the requirement, requirement, requirement in our chapter. chapter, and monthly or city council discussion last night to considering to vote to put a vote to withdraw from Central Vermont Public Safety Authority on the upcoming ballot. So I'd like those three items added to the agenda. Anyone else have any additions to the agenda? Oh, there's Sally, yay. And David, welcome. Okay, uh, with those three additions, I'll assume the agenda is approved by unanimous consent. <laughs> Next is public comment for anybody who'd like to speak on something that's not on the agenda. Yes. Please stay on topic, Stephen. I'm trying to maintain ourselves within that two minute, three minute, three minute guideline, speaking once on each topic. topic. Go ahead. Uh, you're not showed as mute, but you're not coming in. Try that. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. So Montpelier City Council did not discuss. Uh, uh, that's on the agenda. You can talk. You can bring it. You can talk about that when it comes okay. up on the agenda. Right. Stephen. That's fine. Uh, and I, I was going to speak about the audit. The executive director is a mandatory in that. I noticed that my, my comments last time about strict adherence to the charter were not reflected in the draft minutes. And yet a lot of stuff. That's a that topic of something that's on the agenda, Stephen. You can bring it up when we bring minutes up. I like to talk about the discussion. If you ask, okay. ask okay. And, make it, and make an addition specifically to something you feel on this. I'm trying, trying, to, trying to compose a train of thought here, but uh, I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Uh, the It appears to me that forces at work and I, I'll refrain from naming names, are intent on running CVPSA into the ditch or out of business. Uh, I don't know if all of you all saw the emails from uh, the Montpelier police chief to the city manager, wherein they specifically talked about dissolving CVPSA once they've got uh, a line on the money to build a radio system. I believe that this is subversive. I believe that our Potentially, our leadership is in, in, involved in it, uh, in violation of the oath that was taken uh, to support the mission and the purposes of this authority. So these are very, these are very serious, serious concerns, concerns, but we but need to we find, need out find out how, how when, when I asked at the prior city council meeting, meeting that, this that this topic and this mismanagement be addressed it was not taken up at that meeting but then all of a sudden jack mccullough uh brings it up as if a discussion around withdrawing from the authority uh had been discussed in the background so that has to have been planted Stephen, Stephen you're back again on topic of something that's on the agenda so we noted that you said there's mismanagement and there's concern about the charter not having an demanding an executive director Anything else, quickly? I believe that uh, there are folks that uh, I see some new new names on the uh, agenda. I believe that we need to act quickly to amend the charter to allow other towns to join CVPSA by select board vote rather than populist vote. And that should, that should be done. All right, thank you. Thank you.
the next uh, item. Anybody else for public comments? Uh, uh, Brian, Pete. Yes, ma'am. Um, just I would, you know, trying to trying to make sure I can address that emotive and very rather inflammatory uh, accusation there. If uh, Mr. Whitaker bothered to talk about the rest of that that email, which he hasn't, the context there is to look at uh, a, a type of um, managerial design in which we can regionalize some of those communication efforts. Has nothing to do with trying to trying to push CV at PSA. It, it's it's in it's it's all with the spirit of regionalizing and then having folks who are part of that communications and that first responder core take over and lead any type of regionalization efforts that we might go to in the future. So I'm very offended by that. Okay, would you just like to forward that, that to, to um, uh, forward it to me or Doug Coy and we'll get it to the board? Yes, ma'am, I will do that, do that. Okay, thank you, thank you. And next on the agenda is minutes of December 20th. Looking for a motion to approve. Donna, could I just comment on that last bit as long as it's being discussed? I'm sorry, we've gone on to the minutes. And when we all have read this email, then we'll talk about it, okay? Well, it's not okay, but if that's your ruling, I'll abide by it. If indeed, when we get to the end of the meeting under other business and you want to bring it back up, but I really want to watch the clock. We, you know, we tend to have had pretty long discussions about the upcoming budgets and ballot. I think it's going to take a lot of time. If we have leftover time, be glad to go back to it, Kim. Right. So, minutes for December 20th. So moved. So moved. Is that, is that Jim? Yep. Second, second. I'll second. There are some, uh, uh, Stephen, Discussion. and anybody on the board that has any additions or changes to the minutes? I, Donna, can you see yes. me? I, I just, I think that the minutes should just be briefly reflected to uh, include Stephen's comments about the CVPSA, in his opinion, not being in compliance with the charter, which I know is something Stephen okay. has brought up uh, on several occasions, but I do think he said it last time, so I think it should be in there out of compliance with charter. I was going to go to him after the board had additions, but that's great. All right. Any other I board still member? Want to make yeah. Yes, Stephen, I'll come back to you. Any other board member who wants to make an addition to the minutes? Yeah, I would second uh, Justin's comments. I, I think. Okay, Kim. Well, I'm just, I'm just you, asked, you asked if I had anything to say. I do, I do. I think, I think it's important that the minutes reflect what actually happened. They were the best effort. I was taking the minutes and hosting the meeting. So I'm not surprised I missed some things. This is fine to add an addition. Okay, so we have one addition about Stephen's <clears throat> comments of being out of compliance with our charter. Okay, now Stephen, I know you have some additional comments. Yeah, I believe that the uh, the my, the letter from the city manager regarding my mistaking my laptop for a city laptop uh, is appropriate to distinguish your concern about uh, city owned equipment. But uh, you went way beyond that to a lot of uh, spurious allegations uh, in, 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 in attempt to, you know, character smear or whatever, whatever stuff yeah, that you have no knowledge of, of how many times, many times I have, have laid hands on city-owned equipment. So I believe that your tirade in the minutes uh, regarding why you refuse to allow people to share the video screens and the speakers should be struck from the minutes, or at least pared down to a sentence or two. Stephen, I was speaking strictly from my own experience of sitting with you around that table. Only you not, and I. That doesn't Stephen, matter. To I, I'm talking. I put in the minutes exactly what I've experienced with you sitting at city council chambers around the round table the with you there, you fiddling with the speakers. These are not city council minutes. And both at public safety authority meetings and at the Montpelier Infrastructure Transportation Infrastructure Committee. So I'm talking from my experience. Order, Madam Chair. Of, 
you Madam wandering Madam. around. Yes, Jim. Is there not a motion on the right floor right now? I don't, don't know. There is, there is in addition to the motion uh, for correct, uh, correction. So, so the motion was to accept the minutes, minutes. and then that's there. Second, there second. Was that seconded? Uh, yes, it was. And so now, and then there was so a motion to make corrections. And now we're discussing the motion to make corrections. And so one has been that's, that Stephen's comments under public comments should be added that public safety authority is out of compliance with his charter. And the next one was Stephen's request for me to change what I stated, how I perceived his behavior within the city equipment and laptop. And I was explaining that I only talked about what I had and then I quoted directly from Bill's letter for the rest. So I don't wanna change that part. The board- I will modify my otherwise. motion. I'll modify my motion to move that the minutes be approved as corrected. With which which part? <laughs> the out of any, anything that's not in debate. If someone wants to object to it, then they can go ahead and object. To it. But what I'm saying is, I want to move forward. Clarification, Jim. Does that include the uh, modifications that Justin requested? Yes, the out of compliance charter, which has no yet nobody disagrees with. The minutes were presented. I move that we approve them. Other people asked to have things uh, added to it. There was no objections. I'm moving them as corrected unless there are objections. If there's objections to the specific corrections, then we're, we don't we continue the debate. Well, I object and there was another motion to amend them to reflect Whitaker's remarks. And, I think and I'm should... accepting those as corrections. Oh, oh all right. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna be real clear. Maybe Brent is clear. Brent, what do you think the correction is? What I, what I have at this point, I have, I have two, two corrections. The first one being, being that, we, that we add in comments about non-compliance to our charter, charter that Stephen made. Um, and then the second one relates to the use of city-owned equipment that Stephen has made as well. And that's the one I object to. Good. So if I understand where Jim's motion is, that he's accepting the change that there's no objection to, which is out of compliance with our charter, and not accepting the change to my language about the city equipment. Is that correct, Jim? <clears throat> I was accepting all proposed changes to move it forward uh, because I didn't assume there was any objection to it. If you have objection to a vote, no, or continue to object. We make make them make an amendment. I'm not trying to complicate things. We're trying to move things forward. Well, I mean, I I object to changing what I've experienced, which I put in there. Well, in there. Well, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the minutes. We have a motion already already on the floor. You want to make an amendment? That's okay. Yes. Okay. I want to make an amendment that the minutes be approved with the suggestions that Justin made to include Whitaker's comments. About the complaint com compliance of the charter? Yes. Okay. And somebody wants to second that? I'll accept it as a friendly amendment so we don't have to vote on that. Okay. I think we've so, got some prob I think we've got some problems with uh, Robert's rules. We've got a motion. It's been seconded. It's been amended. And now we have another motion on the original motion that maybe has not been accepted. Uh, uh, no, the amendment was seconded, seconded yet. yet. Uh, Jim was trying to buy that by friendly. By friendly. So you're right. Um, Again, again, it can be very specific in your amendment, Kim, because Stephen's comments are both that changes that weren't challenged and they were changes suggested that were challenged. So your amendment includes both or one, Kim? My amendment just includes the suggestions of Justin Dressler. Okay. <laughs> All right. So... Is there a second to that amendment? 
I'll second. Thank you, Justin. I'll give it to Justin. All right. Any other comments about that? Let's vote. All in favor of accepting the minutes as amended with the compliance related to the charter, say aye. 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 Those of those oh, say nay. Say nay. It, passes. it passes. Now the motion reads, reads to accept, to the, accept motion. the motion, to accept the minutes as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you. The, the next was to be the uh, announcement on the treasurer. Bev Hill has resigned. Uh, she is mailing me a letter, maybe at the post office. I didn't get there today. She was very uh, upset. She felt that she'd been harassed and challenged that she was not fulfilling her role as treasurer to Central Vermont Public Safety Authority, that uh, Steve Whitaker expressed these complaints to how she was fulfilling her role or failing to fulfill her role as treasurer. And it's particularly about, about, it. about it. Bev Hill Bev went, to, went to Bill Fraser because Fraser, Stephen came to her, came her at her at her place. place. Bill Fraser explained that indeed our charter reads that the board will have an audit done. It is not our treasurer who does it. And um, I believe try to explain this to Stephen, but all I do know for sure is that that's what it says in the charter. But, Be uh, but Bev really was only doing this as a favor and she doesn't want to have in any way her integrity challenged. It's very, her professional status is, and trust is very important to her. So we are now without a treasurer. We can do an ad for it. It's a bit of an odd uh, position. It cannot be a board member. You have to find somebody with base accounting skills who's willing to give their time and become involved with us. So if you know someone, that's the best way of getting somebody, but otherwise we'll um, go, forward go forward with that and seek someone to fill that role. Any other, Any other comments? comments? Yeah. yeah. Don, I just want to point out that this came up a year ago. And I solicited all the accounting firms in Barry and Montpelier. See if anybody would do that on a voluntary basis. And not a single person was willing to do it. And uh, I didn't. Um, try to figure out a cost. What we did do was figure that the records were kept by the city finance department and CVPSA only deals through the city finance department has control of all its data. And at that time, Judge that the city is audited. That that requirement was satisfied. I admit that it's somewhat open to discussion, but that's how it was resolved a year ago. And I'm sorry, Bev is leaving. She's been a wonderful volunteer and very helpful and somebody that I can rely on. Yes, uh, uh, and you sort of skip to the next topic, which is the audit. Um, and that indeed, not only the year ago, but every time the audit comes up, we say that we, uh, uh, the board has voted to accept Montpelier's audit as ours. We could direct the Montpelier auditors to look at our books within their audit of Montpelier. It was more clear that they were touching some of our records because when we had employee, we had payroll. And they went over, they went over a lot of payroll, lot of payroll records. records. And, with, and with an audit, as you all may know or know or not, you know, the, you know, auditors, the go. auditors go over lots of sheets of paper and they pull out some and they examine them. And anything that jumps out unusual, they do further examining of. Uh, so that only within payroll has our paperwork been really looked at. 
So it's true that uh, our regular checks for our small amount of bills don't get a clear examination. So I would suggest that maybe we look at an audit form to come in and do a what they call an accounting review. And that would at least get us a statement. And Brent, you have that background. What would you think if we did that? And then the board could accept the accounting review as an audit, or we could get an audit. It's just out of proportion to our small finances uh, this year. Well, or that's what... <clears throat> That's what I was going to say, Donna. That's why I had raised my hand because um, I mean, from an audit perspective, audit perspective I mean, we do. We do. I, 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 don't, I don't. No firm is going, is going to, to is going to do an engagement for free just because that would be a conflict. It would it would jeopardize their independence. Um, so there's a lot of independence considerations here. So we'd have to pay for whatever engagement we were we were doing. Um, that being said. Since CVPSA is its own entity, its own legal entity, I don't think we can go under the city of Montpelier's audit unless there was, unless there's some sort of fiduciary uh, responsibility that Montpelier has with our funds, which, you know, the argument could be made that since the, our treasurer is employed with them, that that could be, I think it gets sticky. Um, but I mean, there's there's three levels of assurance here. If we need a full audit, then that's going to be costly. And a, a really, a, a review is, is sufficient, sufficient much about much everything. everything. The only the thing a review doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do is that you're, the auditor can't give the highest, highest level, level of assurance. Of assurance. So really, you're paying just for an extra level of assurance that those financial statements are materially accurate. Um, so, I mean, I, I think review would be fine. In some cases, they do a limited desk review, and that's even has less assurance. I would say that if we were going to, at some point, apply for larger grants, or we were going to um, do some sort of bonding or anything like that, we would want to get an audit just to kind of cover our basis, because a lot of funders will look at that. Um, and how we're handling funds. But I think for all intents and purposes right now, I think a, a review is probably the best way to move forward. And given the size of our budget and what we do, that probably would only cost between 500 and probably $2,500. Right, I thought it'd be under like 3,000 anyways. Well, uh, would it be with the board? Uh, so make a motion, I think I think that grant solicit um, um, estimates from firms, firms for a, a, a review and come back to us with some names and numbers and then we could look at that if do you want a committee so formed or is it okay that brent just does it so move have them go ahead and do it okay so doug is a, is making a motion to approve brent well actually i don't know we need a motion for that but uh, okay no. brent would you do it if, if yeah, Brent will, yeah, I can do that. Okay, okay, that'd be great. Thank you. See, now, if you weren't on the board, you'd be a great treasurer. <laughs> That's what we need, somebody to just volunteer. No, okay. we already had a good treasurer. We did, I know, but I mean, for the next yeah. one, this, to fill this vacancy, to fill this vacancy. Congratulations to Steve Whitaker for getting rid of it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's be nice. Let's be nice. Um, I am being girl, nice. I'll pay a lot more. Okay, so, so yeah, yeah, I won't say that. So that right now to take care of the audit. The, audit. the, the next thing that was I added to the agenda was the Montpelier City Council touched on, discussed. Oh, yes, Justin, I'm sorry. Steve has a quick comment. He's assured okay. me it's going to take 20 seconds. Oh, I didn't do that. I'm assuring you that it's only going to take 20 seconds. So okay, to correct the record, because this is starting to get... Uh, distorted beyond recognition. I went into the city clerk's office where there are witnesses and I asked Bev, who was sitting there in her typical chair, if the Montpelier audit included CVPSA. She told me she did not and that she was tired of doing the work and it was shady and that she was likely to resign. There was no a attack or harassment or blame or anything. And then I asked again last night at the city council meeting of the auditors to be sure that their audit that they were presenting 
in draft, in draft form, form did not did not include include PSA, 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 and I was and assured I was it did not. Did not. So, so you've, you've been, been lied to again by your by chair. Your chair. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Stephen. You have brought up the audit and our treasurer several times at Montpelier City Council meeting, which Bev says reflects back on her. Okay. Anyone else? We'll move on to the next item, uh, Montpelier City Council. They just dis discussed. Uh, they did not discuss. There was a discussion. Yes, there was uh, about I just, I was whether or not to vote to consider putting on the ballot for citizens to consider withdrawing from Central Vermont Public Safety Authority. It was a very short discussion and one that they thought people should be thinking about. They wanted to bring in their two rep appointed representatives, Justin and Doug, uh, for further discussion. And it'll be reconsidered. It'll be actually more fully considered on the 20th. So one, so I wanted to make sure everyone sure knew that, knew that, 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 was, that was afloat. And, and I guess to, I guess discuss, to discuss it, what's, what's, what's people's game? feelings about it. I mean, there's pros and cons. You can say the voters that will be out there and they'll show them that they want reasonization and give direction to the council and the, and the city staff. Or the voters may say, no, we don't want it. And then we'll lose a member and we will cease to exist. Well, ultimately there's a whole bunch of steps I can go through with you that comes from the state statute about what happens when members withdraw. Um, but ultimately that's what would happen. We would cease to exist without having members. And you need at least two to, to exist. Can I just clarify something, Donna? Yeah, sure. Are we talking about putting it on next year's ballot or this coming uh, elect, uh, town meeting day? This one, it takes a year for it to take effect after your, uh, a community votes out. So oh, I understand. So the actual vote would happen in March and then the effect would be a year from now. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Doug, Doug, you uh, think, Yes, I will attend the meeting on the 20th, 20th. And I think effectively, uh, whatever happens at the March meeting will determine what uh, what happens with the public. Well, I mean, do, you, do you it think it's a good to, thing? Do we encourage, discourage? I mean, help me out here. Do we want to figure out where the voters are with us? I mean, where is our support? I mean, if it's not with the staff and not with the city councils, is it with the public? No, I, I agree. Uh, put it on the ballot, have the first talk at it. Um, you know, and, and what happens, happens. Okay, I have, yeah. I, I'm sorry that I didn't collect all the hands up in order, uh, but I know that Brent has his, Justin has his, and Brand. It's Bram. Bram, Bram, Tobin. Okay, okay. Maybe you should go first because you're, you're, you're a new person to me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have my uh, Zoom light. I can't figure out how that works. In any case, uh, I'm, I'm uh, attending the meeting. Um, uh, outlying towns that uh, use dispatch, uh, and I was the former select board chair at Plainfield, um, and I was involved in, in, in government there. Um, we are facing exponentially rising costs for dispatch and emergency services. And uh, my interest in attending the meeting is to better understand, I think there has to be a collaborative way to address those spiraling costs. And I think that there is a, um, a difference between the interests of um, you know, the citizens of Montpelier versus maybe some of the outlying communities that are facing this spiraling cost. So um, um, and I'm, and I'm not, I'm not laying in on whether one kill your should or should be part of the, of the system, but if there, there is, is some, some way, some way that, that there can be uh, some assurances to the outgoing towns regarding um, costs going forward, that's my concern. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Brent, your hands up. Yeah, so my question, uh, what, uh, how did this conversation begin with Montpelier? Like what, what's kind of the, what's the rationale behind wanting to put this to the voters? 
I think part of it was the fact that um, that was in the budget that right now we've told them that it's likely that we're going to put fourteen thousand one hundred dollars on the ballot, and they're saying, you know, what are they paying for? When our efforts, unfortunately, are, are not strong, strong. Our three members are not a stronger coalition. So we've struggled to get the study study done, and now when we've asked the cities and the Capital FAR to come on really strong and make a firm commitment, Barry City in their last letter to us very clearly said, we're not interested in following the recommendations through. They're stepping back. Montpelier and Capital FAR are very much interested in pursuing radios and simulcast and extend, I think an invitation, Sally, you can correct me, Doug uh, Hoyt, um, an invitation that public safety authority be um, possible assistance to that. What do you say, Sally? Yeah, I know, I think it's gonna be a, a discussion for our next um, mutual aid meeting, which is next Wednesday night, I believe. Um, just as far as what our plans are going forward with the radio system and the, the quotes that we've got, and that type of thing. So I think we'll have a better idea after next week what the plan is. Okay, and just related to what Brent has Brent said, said I'm, not, I'm not missing you, Justin. Any, any comments about what, about what Brent has said? Okay, does that sort of answer your question as far as I know it? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you, Donna. Okay, uh, Justin, whether it's you or Stephen, your hands up. It's going to be me for like 10 seconds and then Stephen. I guess I just view this as a, a um, it is what it is situation. Like CVPSA has no say in what happens at that meeting and what Montpelier puts on the ballot. And so like we could be sad about it or we can be happy about it, but I just don't see all that much to discuss about it because Doug and I will go to the meeting, we'll inform them what we, you know, what we think as members, but um, I don't know. I just don't think there's much to discuss amongst the whole committee. And then Steve, you can go. Well, again, first I want to correct the record. There was no discussion last night about this at the city council meeting. Uh, it, it was clear that Donna had seated the chair to try to raise it and get it discussed, but there was, but there was no, especially, especially from the other member city councilors who had been asked, been asked at the prior meeting to put the mismanagement of CB2 and on the, on the agenda, and they did decline to do that. So this being, there's, there's no, there has been no discussion except through the emails that we discussed that uh, where the city manager and the police chief are attempting to basically steal the thunder or cut the legs out from under CVPSA and build it on a radio system and per increase their monopoly power over all these small towns. So the only way to revive CVPSA is to get more members in and basically break this monopoly. Uh, conflict of interest with the city of Montpelier bringing in $400,000 from these hostage towns uh, could not be more uh, flagrant and it apparently uh, our city councilor uh, chair, chair is, uh, is uh, playing, playing to the city's agenda rather than the she, she, she took, she took to the CVPSA agenda. agenda. So, I, so I, I, I want that record to be clear. To be clear. This uh, that's, the, you, that's your opinion, Stephen. Thank you, but that's not true. I've had no discussions with Brian Pete about this at all. I am, haven't even read his email. I'm so, I probably should have. It's probably in stacks of emails that I missed that I was copied on. Okay. Uh, any other, some hands up? Uh, Brent, uh, Doug Brent. Good Your evening, Don. Good evening, Thank Donna. Can you. you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I was just curious it's about the comment that you just made about the city of Barrie going on record. Um, that we were against um, this, or you spoke about the, the letter. The letter that you got roughly three weeks ago was from both the city of Montpelier and the city of Barrie. It was signed by both of the city managers and by, by both of the both city of the managers. Mm -hmm. um, um, after, speaking after speaking with the fire chiefs, the deputy, the deputy fire, fire chiefs, chiefs, the police chiefs, and deputy police chiefs from both cities, Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I felt didn't, didn't, that it was better off for the. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to correct that for the record. The audio record is everything else. It wasn't just the city of Barrie, and I was. It was both cities 
jointly decided that and unanimously decided that. So if that, and in fact, sends a message, that's the message that we were trying to send. But I wanted to, the record to be reflected that it was not just the city of Barrie. I'm sorry if I inferred that. The, the, it's within unanimous that. among public safety yeah. officials from both communities. So okay. I, I, Mr. Yeah. McKenzie is having trouble showing up on the screen tonight. He just he just um, messaged yeah. me a minute ago. So I wanted to make sure to correct that. That's it. Okay. That's all I had to say. No, no, no help me no. out because you're right. It was a, it was a letter, letter. Within that letter, very statement, statement very, very distinctly, distinctly different. different. I read very distinctly different from Montpelier's. That, you, that I read that Barry City was saying they did not want to continue to be involved in the simulcast, but they did want to, uh, but Montpelier wanted to continue working with Capital West on simulcast. That's what I got out of that letter. And I wished I had it in front of me. So I will reread it. I didn't mean to. Uh, I, I wished I had it in front of me too, but it was meant to say that for the two cities, the radio issues that we have, we wanted to go on our own, Capital West. Yep. And again, I'm not speaking for the managers who wrote this, but I believe that the intent was, and I'm just speaking to what was said at the, mm -hmm. the meeting that we all had together was that yes, Montpelier needed to because they're in a little different position. They have customers. Um, yes. Their customers are the mutual aid system, so they want they to go support in support of what the mutual aid system needs to do, to do because, because the Televate report, as well as, as well the as comments, comments from the public safety chiefs, have carved out that the needs are different for the two cities versus the mutual aid system. Yes. As far yes. as technology goes, the needs are different. Right. And I, I perceive that and, by the city's um, going alone. What that letter meant to say was that for our, our cities would go their own way and on their own would, without CVPSA, but the, the Montpelier would stay in the discussions because of in the sake of their customer base, which is the mutual aid system. And that is what I meant to say by my comments. Thank you for the clarification. That was That made it much clearer. Uh, Doug, I really appreciate that, but that was my intention. The cities have decided to go on their own on their own radio issues, and Montpelier will continue with their customer on theirs. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. For clarification. Uh, Steve McKinsey, anything you want to add, add to Doug Brent's comments? Comment. You were in and out, in and out during that process. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think essentially uh, Doug is correct that <clears throat> we both municipal the big municipalities, Montpelier Berry, uh, view the consoles and the radio uh, procurement as, as something our two communities have a mutual interest in, and we can proceed on that on our own. And we don't um, we don't see any particular advantage to try to do that with the uh, with the with the authority. Doug, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that that basically said so. So we're turning our back on the larger project. I think what we were, um, uh, or the regional project. I think really what we were trying to emphasize that for the, for the immediate future, um, we want to proceed to address the immediate concerns that we have, consoles and radios. That 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 is correct. Okay. Uh, uh, Justin, hand up. It's Steve, um, and then okay. my so I, I think just to be perfectly clear, the City Council of Montpelier has not adopted the position that is reflected in that letter. In fact, when I got the letter, it had not even been signed. Uh, so I still don't see signatures on the copy here. So it's it's important not to represent that these are decisions made by the city. The city managers might have their recommendation and their intent. But Bill Frazier doesn't run the city. Uh, the city council take, makes these big policy decisions. The city council has not become educated on this issue, nor have they decided to proceed, go, go their own way. Uh, so I, I, I need that to be clear like it is in the record. OK, that's your opinion. Your opinion. All, right. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a hand up, Donna. 
Oh, I'm sorry. You're, it blends right in with that corner of your room color. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Tim. Donna, I think the reality of where we are today is that no grant money will be available unless there's a regional effort. And I don't think two cities hiring their own uh, funding their own consoles. The problem is they won't have any customers. If there is no um, simulcast system for the people that they are serving, they won't have any customers. And the only way they're going to get a regional system is to get a grant. grant. And the only way to get a grant is for everybody participating to have a stake in the grant. And I think that's what's going to happen at the state level. There's plenty of money out there, but nobody in his right mind would give a lot of money to one, to the towns to fund their own project without being in a regional cooperation. Okay, I'm, so, I'm going to ask you to, to stop there, Kim, because well, you I'm are gonna, making- I'm not, I'm not gonna what, stop there, Donna. Well, because, I'm gonna ask you to, because you're totally off topic. It's great No, I'm not off topic. About the, the topic center. was, how do we feel about my pillar withdrawing? And what I'm saying is, okay. it's cutting off the only support they'll ever get to maintain a customer base. And it's short-sighted short -sighted. and it doesn't take into account the realities of where we are today. And that's what we need to think about instead of individual self-interest. We all hang together or we fail together. Oh, okay, so then within the, the the board's approach, you see it as a negative for them to put it before the voters. Well, Is that what you're saying? That's what. Look, it's always an item for discussion. The question is, how well are we prepared for the discussion? And until we get the legislature to decide what they're going to do with the millions of dollars that's available to parcel out to have public safety communications. And I am certain, certain it's going to require regional cooperation. And I think, I think that, that will be plain sometime in this legislative session. If I'm wrong, then maybe CBPSA doesn't have any function. Oh, OK. Uh, Brian Pete, you have your hand up, and then Doug Hoyt. Yes, yes, ma'am. I just, it just, I don't want to belabor the issue, but the the consoles are a responsibility of both agencies to make sure that we have for for, for the Montpelier Police Department it is incumbent upon us to have the equipment that we need to service fire and police dispatch EMS, as well as to um, uh, to capital fire mutual aid uh, system. So it's something that we have to buy for the organizations. That's just just a piece of equipment that we have to buy that we're making sure as we move forward that it's going to work towards any regionalization efforts. Okay, that's These a fair thing we have to buy for our agencies. That's a fair comment. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Doug Hoyt. Yeah, uh, I guess I'd like to see the, see the comments, comments that uh, Kim has to make and anybody else. Forward them on to me. I think discussion on the 20th. I will certainly advocate for it. I don't want to spin back on uh, old uh, topic, but uh, you know I've talked with uh, Steve McKenzie about this. Uh, talked with Brian Pete. You know the work on the consoles at both Barry and Montpelier have to occur, no matter. What. It's got to be done. Two years ago. And that's yeah. probably, probably not long, not long enough. Um, both consoles systems and everything else they're failing uh, 
people such as Sally and Brand um, have to have these concepts and their related items. Should not, should not wait any longer. You know, what, what the city of Barry and Montpelier are doing to resolve that is perfectly fine in my book. And I, and I wish them the best of luck. Public safety authority, with the public safety authority, it would be my hope that along the way of trying to get that work done, that somehow city of Barry and Montpelier recognize that in fact, the public safety authority could assist them in making it happen. Cap the fire mutual aid system, you know, and its sub organization, Capital West, um, have been in existence for what, 25, 30 years? Sally, say yes, no. Uh, or, Maybe more. I'm not sure when we switched to Rangers, but it was a long, a long time ago. ago. Right. And a lot of people, people put a lot of work into it. And what Montpelier has done in terms of its relationship with Capital Fire Mutual Aid and specifically Capital West uh, is, is a critical to the operations of public safety services in the surrounding communities. Ken is right, trying to get everybody else on board has been the real hard pull. But let's let's Go talk to the city council on the 20th, and let's try to get them involved in this process a little more than they are. And who knows? Who knows what will come out of that? I'll be quiet for now. Okay. okay. Yes. I mean, our main purpose tonight of our public hearing and making decisions about our ballot need to be done. So I'm going to close the discussion, discussion on this on topic. This topic. And move, and move on, on, on to uh, the discussion of the proposed, proposed three-year three budget. budget. I'm actually going to open the public meeting. The budget went out as sort of cleaned up, but still with the FY23 budget reflecting $30,000 requests to the two cities divided between Barry and Montpelier. And with FY24 with $50,000 requested. Again, we have to do a three year budget. So that's just a projection. But what is on the table is to finalize tonight the FY23 budget and any ballot requests that we have. Are there any comments, and especially from the public, related to this budget and from members. our members? Very, very familiar capital far about this, about this budget. How do your organizations see it? Um, Justin, I think Doug, I'm not sure if your hand's up new, but I'm going to do Justin first and then come back to you. Justin. It's Steve. He'll be here. Okay, well, he's going to wait until the board gets, okay. Okay, you want to do board oh, first? Oh, no, you're right. No, 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 you're right. I said public. I was yeah. thinking, no, yep. it, it is a public it. hearing for our members, yeah. but it also I, includes the general public. So, All right, Stephen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the budget, it, it's somewhat farcical to call it a three-year budget uh, because it has been uh, carved down below the bone. Uh, now we, we spent $40,000, $50,000 on the Televate needs assessment. That was supposed, that was supposed to be followed by an engineered design so that, so that our, an RFP could be issued to pur purchase, purchase systems. systems. And a key question that still hasn't been addressed is, are we going to take advantage of the federal money available by designing integrated LTE cellular because that's the future of public safety broadband complementing the LT LMR radio. And so that to design the cellular LTE service while you it's put it, design the LMR 
is the most cost effective way and it allows the available federal broadband dollars to pay for towers and generators and fiber backhaul in a way that significantly reduces the cost of the public safety LMR system. So this, this has been laid out and ran in the newspaper and ran in Digger and sent to all of y'all and no one seems to have understood that, but now is now the time, time to take the uh, needs assessment and move it, move it forward, forward with an RFP for an engineer design. design. But that, requ that requires 100,000 more or more above the $50,000 budget that's being proposed. So I'm not suggesting we ask for that money from the two members, uh, and we have no ability to ask for it from the third member. But I am saying that the budget should include room to bring on new members, and that would require board action tonight to move, vote to amend the charter to allow members to vote by select board to opt in. Then those towns can bring some of their ARPA money in to supplement the 30000 that will that's being asked for from Barry and Montpelier. So... The, the towns that are served by this dispatch system have the most at stake. The, the, the best way for them to control their cost is to have a seat at the governance of how those costs how those, how those decisions are made, and they may be able to fill bed zones in their cellular canopy. All this radio technology and expensive trucks doesn't do any good if the person who needs help can't, is in a dead zone and can't call for help. So it's important that these, these technologies are inextricably linked. So I'm advocating that we structure the budget to include other as yet unidentified sources of funds, but limit the, I won't try to overturn the $30,000 limit of the budget ask that for, from the two towns. But it's important that you understand that only by getting new towns to join Will we overcome the dysfunction of this board and uh, be able to fund the integrated planning that's necessary? Thank you, Stephen. You're, you're way over three minutes. Thank you. All right. Anyone else want to make comments on the, the proposed budget? Justin. Justin. I just, I just want to tease out just to make sure that I understand what Stephen is saying and just give me the head thumbs up or thumbs down. Hey, Steve, I think what you're just saying is that in terms of the budget, we're, it, we, can appro we can envision a larger budget without asking for more money. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. With regard to that comment, I, I, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea to dream big at all. I do think it's a bad idea to ask for the voters for 100 grand or whatever, or 150 grand. But I don't think that having some sort of long-term plan is a bad one. I also don't think it's necessary at all because when we vote on the budget next year, we can just change the FY24. It's the only um, way you're going to But I'm also interested in knowing what the um, what the well, definitely knowing what Jim is about to say, and the the select board members, the people who have been on these um, these and these surrounding towns. Okay, thank you, Jim. I agree that it's important to have a, a bigger plan, but when you propose a municipal budget, it's got to be it's got to be balanced. You can't propose a budget without having a funding funding source. If I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I put a line item there as grants, and I have offered the board the chance to put money in there, and then you go after grants. So there is a line item blank right now. You could put money in there, and then say. We're going to propose that money, and then if let's say you put fifty thousand dollars under grants, just not knowing the source, you could then put the same amount around consultant, so your budget's met, balance. As a voter, I would look at that and say, and what happens if you don't get the grant? Are we on the hook for the money? And that's exactly what happened in Barry City when they put up the uh, lights mm -hmm. on the football field, mm -hmm. and. They were going to raise the money with fundraising, and they didn't. And Barry City picked up another forty-five thousand dollars on putting those lights. Well, up. I mean, one would hope one wouldn't hire consultants until you had the money. But yes, that's that's definitely an issue. Well, saying well, saying. Well, it was the same idea. They were they were they had a budget, had a budget and, and this, this was yep. actually not a municipality, but they, they were relying relying on money that was not actually materialized yet. Yep, yep, yep. That, that and I'm not against saying that we we have some bigger plans. But I think we, I'm assuming we're 
calls to the voters has to be based on something that is um, funded. But I'm not sure how, where the three-year plan comes in. Where does the three-year budget come in? Is that what our charter says it was supposed to propose? Yes, a three-year, yes. And so when we started with this first phase of the need assessment, we thought we would follow up with another $50,000 phase. Some of that has changed as the information within the study itself we received had a page all about what we needed under administrative assistance. And it's pretty large. Mm. Uh, so, so this is your, this is your last your, chance. If, again, you have that, have that line, line item there that you could plug in some money, some money, money and grants, and then, and then you go you looking go. for it. And you don't spend it until you get it. Um, any other board members? I see um, Brahm and Doug Brent. Talvin, you want to go first? Yeah, yes, uh, right. I'm not a, not a board member. I was just a member of the public. Oh, that's I, good. I, I, I think, uh, you know, in terms of the specific item at hand regarding the $30,000, I, I think that's, that sounds uh, great, reasonable. I, I just want everybody on the board to understand that for a small town, with uh, we, we deal with numbers that are much different than maybe Barry City or Montpelier. And mm -hmm. the percentage that these items, if you if you sort of project out, um, suddenly, um, you know, a few years ago, you know, we we're paying six thousand dollars. The renewal came, and it was twelve thousand dollars, eight percent increase per year when inflation was one percent. I, I I have no idea what it is now. I'm sure it's exponentially higher. I, I really think that. Um, the and I, I completely understand Montpelier and Barry, uh, city and town, all are facing real challenges and have to look out for their interests. And and I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that for the outlier towns, this issue is really going to come to the fore because when you have exponential growth and a very small budget, the taxpayer is really going to feel it. I just want everybody to understand. Okay, thank you. Uh, Doug Brent. Thank and you, Donna. Doug, thank you, you Donna. You may not be aware, but you're speaking, you sort of bubble out, and then you come back and you bubble out. So, uh, so um, uh, um, right back at you. I get the same thing on this end. I hear part of your conversation. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to say that. So, something I, something I, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Steve. If, if folks have noticed, at least on, uh, in, on Doug's audio, it does go uh, blank for a minute, but when it comes back on, it, it picks up at the end of where it went off, so you're not missing anything. It's just a, a very pregnant pause. Yeah, I'm just never sure when it's a real pause or it's a technical yeah. pause. Right. So I've That's, interrupted that same thing it. happens to everybody on this end, too. And I apologize. So Brent, go, and we will be patient. Okay, so Brent or me? Uh, Doug, Brent. <laughs> okay. Um, so one thing that I wanted to raise, as I raised at the last meeting, what are, what is Central Vermont Public Safety Authority doing about recruiting new towns to join? Going. Because the questions that I get as a public safety official from the public that I protect is the question they come to me and say, as fire chief, do you support this request that CVPSA wants to put on the ballot again for more money? And why do you support it or why do you not support it? And it's, it's a hard question to answer because they've generally prefaced it, has anybody else joined? And what are we doing about getting other towns to join to spread this money amongst all of them to make it more easy on everyone? And lastly, I would say if I was asked that question by my city council, it would be a, in, a real hard decision to stand in front of my city council if they said, do we support giving more money to CVPSA or not? I, I, that would be a very hard thing for me to do because I'm likely to say I'll be voting my way in the, the voting, in the voting booth. 
as a as a tax tax payer and registered voter in the city of Barry, I will probably be voting no, no on it. I, I just I I'm sorry, but it's not that I lack respect for what has done because the two products that CVPSA has bought won the report from Paco and all the work that he did, and to the Televate report, I think that those. We got our money's worth from those. I know other people think otherwise, but I think we got our money from those things. But I'm not sure that I disagree with Donna, what you said at the last meeting, maybe this is not the year to ask for money from Barry and Montpelier. I, that rang true with me and I had to have to ask myself that same question. So thank you for your time. I hope I didn't speak too long. No, thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to go to respond to Doug. Uh, I was just going to close the public hearing and then the board have discussion for final decision. Is that all right, Kim? Can I respond to Doug? Oh, okay. Okay. Doug, Doug unfortunately, I've only done part of a job. Until we get a Whitaker calls it an engineering study. Televate calls it a high level um, planning. The basic idea is that somebody needs to say, we need equipment that can do X, Y, and Z to make this work. And we're going to leave it to the providers to come up with that equipment because we don't want to specify the equipment because if it doesn't work, then we're on the hook. We want the providers to have to warrant that the equipment they recommend will supply the needs that are in a high level study. And until that is done, we don't have any way to go to look for grant money for millions of dollars that are going to be available for just these kind of problems. Because we won't have the so-called shovel-ready plan to go forward. So with the 40,000 we have on hand roughly and 30,000 new money, I don't know if we'll have enough money to do, I'm gonna just call it high level planning rather than engineering. But I think we're gonna to need to do a uh, RFP to find a consultant and it could be Televate, uh, I'm fully satisfied with them. But our charter requires us to do RFPs. So, so We've come halfway, but unless we have the money to get to the finish line, it's going to be wasted. So, okay, I'm, I'm, can you sum it up, please. It's a well. I'm just about. I just, Doug. I understand what you're saying, but I think the job is only partly done, and the money we're asking for, I don't think it's enough. But we won't know until we put it on an RFP. So Donna, he kind of made that statement in the form of a question. So I will kind of answer it. <laughs> um, so I will answer it this way. I don't think of anybody that on the, that screen that I'm looking at tonight has chaired a project managed multi-million dollar radio projects. I have, I've done two of them. The latest one has been on the air for over six years and now. Never, never shut, shut off one for one. Second, we never we hired an engineer for either one, either one of the projects at all. At all. It was always, always engineered, engineered through the vendor. vendors. Because you ask for certain things to be able to be done, you don't ask for certain pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. You ask for the project to be on the air and meet the 59 standard, which it's on the air 99.999 percent of the time and unless they can meet that it doesn't matter what equipment they specify so i'm not going to argue this point but i will tell you that i've been in charge of those projects a third one was a five hundred thousand dollar tower that we put up in south Brunswick, and you can see it every time you drive up the interstate it's right on the golf course um 
and we have had never a problem and never hired engineers to tell us what we needed to put out in an RFP. All okay. Uh Always did the RFP RFPs ourselves. Had no problem. The first project was one point three five million. The second one was one point six million dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars tower project. Tower project. Been, there, Been there, done, done that. that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Doug, I am going to ask, ask again, 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 and I appreciate your points, but I'm, I'm going to bring us back to the board closing the public hearing, and the board now looking at: Are they going forward with the budget as presented? and asking this $30,000 from the two cities. This needs to be finalized and approved tonight. It goes then to Montpelier and Barry to be on their ballots. And the warning, I gave you a sample warning both last meeting and this meeting, that the $30,000 will be divided 15,900 from Barry City, 14,100 from City of Montpelier. Entertain a motion and discussion. I'll move the budget. As presented? Yes. Okay. A second? I'll second. I'll second it. Jim. Jim. All, right. All right. Further discussion about, about, about the motion, motion as presented. Yes, Jim. <clears throat> and then the, the overview of the whole thing it, it comes down to what is, where are we going what's our future and I, I think uh, several people have kind of alluded to this um, I I see value in the public safety authority continuing um, at some level um, we're going to need to have the public support there's no question about it I I guess I'm against either city putting on the ballot to, to pull out um, but if we if they put a budget item on the on their um, <clears throat> the ballot each uh, each uh, city and it fails it it certainly is an indication of our support we could still continue to a certain amount of time um, thirty thousand dollars or fifteen thousand whatever, whatever. Um, that, that's not that's a lot not of money, money and and there's hundreds of study, study committees and. and um, exploratory committees and whatever in the state legislature that they have funded for years that never accomplished what they set out to do. They spent a lot of money. Um, we're sort of an exploratory um, study committee is what we are. You know, and I think the radio project is a terrific project. I'm still having difficulty wrapping my head around who should own it, who should buy it, who should fund it. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's it's just very much still up in the air. Capital West, I think, probably should be the likely ones to to do the whole thing because they're already in that position. I'm not, I guess they don't have the bonding uh, capability to do that, but they they certainly would have be able to be eligible for a grant. I think, uh, but I'm not suggesting that that um, that we step back from supporting them. I, I'm just trying to figure out a way that we continue, continue the structure, structure as we have searched for, for a relevance. And, and that's what we're sort of searching, searching, trying to find, to find something. Uh, you know, I still see future uh, issues down the road that, that we could collaborate on. And this, this would be a structure for a platform to, to create, um, you know, a collaborative effort. But um, so I, I guess what I'm saying is we, we may, We'll find out one way or the other whether the public uh, supports us if they vote for this thirty thousand dollars. If they don't, well, then we, the writing's on the wall. Maybe, maybe we should take up all and go home. But um, you know, we've got a we've got a couple of years or a year left before that's necessary. But anyway, that's just sort of a so so that's basically <clears throat> in support of the motion. It's in support of the motion, but it's a convoluted mm -hmm. response to. Yeah. I'm very frustrated. I don't know where we're going. I, I don't know what our purpose is. I haven't figured that out yet. I, I have in my mind what I think it ought to be, but, but it's, it's everyone's right. It requires right. more towns. It requires a real regional, regional effort. effort. It requires agreement on what, on what regional uh, stuff should be regionalized and what stuff shouldn't be regionalized. And, and we don't have a buy-in yet from all the, the, the stakeholders, as they like to say. Anyway. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm supporting the budget. Okay, I'm going to go to Justin first as a board member and then Doug Brent, I'll go to you. Uh, Justin? 
Jim, I'm curious, does, do you think maybe we should just ask for more then if this is a true referendum? Is 30 too small and then we just ask for more and like make it an actual referendum? Because you're right, like 30 grand, like maybe people are just like, I, they don't even think twice about it and they don't actually think if this is something they want. I'm just curious your opinion. It seems to be more involved well, of us. See if we get lucky or? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, I just don't know. No, I, I really haven't figured out what the 30 grand is going to be used for necessarily. Yeah, we don't have any real you know, It's not going to do the, the engineering. Um, well, I can, I can, I can, good. Oh, no, oh, no, it can do, 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 do a great deal of phase two. Not the engineering, not Stephen's terminology, but what we had planned in phase two. I, I saw it as a token um, indication of, you know, it, it is, has the well gone dry? And, you know, do you want us to keep moving forward or do you want us to wrap up? Mm -hmm. But in either event, we'll, we'll get, we'll, no, I would stay with the 30,000 to answer your okay. question. Thanks. I'm talking about rent. Okay. Um, I lost Doug Brent's picture. Is he still there? So okay. I had forgotten to take oh. my hand down, Donna. Okay. All right. Now I just want to go back to the motion because I presented the budget and the warning and I read the warning division. Is that acceptance of just the budget? This motion, this motion really is really about the budget? No, I'm no, sure it's the uh, calendar item warning. Okay, okay. And the warning not only includes the budget number, um, the $30,000, but it also includes to elect one at-large board member to serve for a three-year term commencing March 2022. And it's a warning if it's approved, then Doug uh, Brent Householder and I will need to sign live and get it to the cities. Okay, I just want to make sure it was including both. Thank you. Secretary, did you get that? Does that make sense to you? Okay. Any further discussion? Board members? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed aye. or sustaining? Yay, it passed. All right. Now, the other thing that came up about the ballots. city ballots is that, is that Hill, your city council, council voted to not, not to mail. mail an automatic mail in all, all the ballots. ballots. So, so for the Public safety. safety Authority, we will be integrated into Montpelier's ballot as usual. Barry City had not contemplating mailing to everyone, so that wasn't an issue for, Barry, for us in Barry City. But at one point, we might have had had our own ballot in Montpelier, but that is no longer an issue. Oh, so God. that's good. Simplicity, less confusion, as well as Less cost. Other business. Kim, do you want to go back to your comment that I cut you off on? Did you get satisfied with what you said? How about amending the charter? That's what I'm about to say. I'm I'm ready to adjourn. I think there's a we've got to see where we're going and then we'll pick up where we go from here. Okay. okay. And the, and the other thing, um, um, there was, it wasn't from any board, board, board member. Does the board member want to include a discussion about, about the charter change? Uh, Justin. So Stephen has suggested uh, amending the charter to make it easier for other municipalities to join. To join. I know a lot of you probably haven't read the charter line by line, but the way it works is that other municip municipalities can join us, but it's got to be by um, voter vote. So there's this 90149 section. And A says anybody can join us by a vote of two thirds of us. But then B says, if we decide to let them in, then the municipality has to vote on it. If we just get rid of B, that gets rid of those voting procedures, and it would make it a lot easier for us to reach out to other municipalities. If that is something that we want to do, which it sounds like Doug thinks that's probably Doug Brent thinks that's probably a good idea. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Doug, but that's what it sounded like before. Um, and it sounds like if it's going to be a regional authority, we want them eventually. I don't see a lot of downside of striking that part of the charter charter because it, it just all it does is create a procedural barrier. And, and um, okay, just, just so you know, in the past, yep. we have failed getting past the select boards to get to the voters. And this is. <laughs> 
this is mirrored after all districts. So I don't, I don't know how easy that would go through the legislators. We have a lot of other amendments that the charter needs, some really simple housekeeping ones, as well as more complicated. And any changes we propose have to go into the legislators to their review and their approval. Uh, but yep. the, big, the big blocks have been the select boards, not the voters. Yeah, so I do. believe that. But it's it's just like it's it's a logistical barrier in addition to an actual like having to get through these people. It's just like you have to wait for an election time. You have to run an election, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, that's what I'd say. Steve, uh, Steve's going to in a second, but I see there are two others that have their hands up first. So it's all about the board, the board, board, board to amend their charter. So, so, I'd like to on Justin's suggestion. I'd like, I'd like to yeah. Jim? Just, Justin, the problem with what the suggestion is, for a town to become a member, it has to be able to pay if, if, if a town is a member, then in theory, the board votes as we have tonight, that we're gonna raise so much money. And that money automatically goes to the voters on a ballot to vote for. You can't amend that part out of the membership because you're taking out the ability of a town to pay. So this, this is a lot of just joining. The, the joinder has to include an agreement by the electorate of a town to pay or at least to vote on an assessment that may be made. So it's two steps. So I've been a I've not been in agreement that we need to amend the charter to do that. And I'm happy to have a little more detailed discussion with you. But we don't have any members at the moment other than Barry and Montpelier. The towns are not a member. They've never joined. In my opinion, they don't even have a right to vote on anything except dispatching. And steadfastly, they've refused to even discuss it, as far as I know. And I've been talking to Donna about this for at least 18 months. And the town now, what I want to do is get a discussion of the people, either, either Cap, Cap West or whoever it may be, to come in and tell us there's a wonderful process in the charter. It's all discussion and negotiations and trying to work out a fair way to assess the, uh, the costs. And okay, thank you. Any, so any other I board think, members? I think, I think I advocate doing it, but it's a much more complex problem. Any other board member want to comment on um, this particular charter change? Okay, I see uh, Steve McKenzie's hand up. Uh, yeah, I, uh, so I'm, I'm going to act out of my element here. Um, I'll be an engineer providing some legal advice so you can take, you can take it for us. But my, 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 my suspicion is that those provisions in the charter, charter are there for a reason and probably to to make it a little bit more difficult than easy whatever charter changes the board might be contemplating or proposing i i assume you would have a legal review certainly before i moved ahead to try to sh strike a, a provision of your current charter you, you'd certainly need that that reviewed by the attorney and i'm probably saying the obvious but my guess is that the the reason it's there is not just at the convenience uh, of the uh, authority, but it may be uh, mechanics of the state statutory, state statute yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I think it, it does have something to do with districts that select boards can't bypass their voters when they commit to an authority that can tax them. 
Okay, uh, okay, Steve, uh, Steve uh, Jim, uh, Jim, Ward. Jim Ward, sorry. I think you just comment, comment. I heard you say it's like the way the districts are all done. Are you talking like solid waste management districts and, and I'm talking about districts, districts, districts yes. that have taxing authority. This was what our charter was modeled after. And we don't have state, taxing. We don't have taxing authority, do we? Yes, we do of our members. That's why we can put this on the ballot, whether Montpelier or Barry want us to, we can. It's just a matter of our relationship with them when we do it when they don't like it. Okay, okay. so the city councils do not have to approve. Yes, Public Safety <clears throat> Authority has direct taxing power. Right. And, and other districts that have that go directly to the voters. Voters, yes. But whatever kind of changes like that, we would definitely, one, make sure the board had to prove it, and then pull in legal advice and then proceed. But, uh, uh, Talbot, you have your hand up. I guess, I guess I'm not a member of the board, obviously. I, I just, since you were, since you were discussing, discussing select, select board's reactions to um, <laughs> this issue, I just wanted to uh, give the perspective. Uh, it is a knee jerk reaction for any select board member. I've been there that when something is proposed that doesn't have an obvious um, near term benefit uh, in terms of expending dollars, you're going to get a no. But I really, really don't think that people are as educated on this issue as they should be. Uh, and I really, really think that when the smaller towns start seeing this expense eat up a huge percentage of the budget, you're going to get maybe the towns joining together and coming up with their own ideas. And this is not to be disparaging about Barry and Montpelier. You guys obviously have a lot of challenges and are doing the best you can. It's just that in, from, from our point of view, the smaller, the smaller towns, towns um, I, I think that this, this is going to, going to boil over at some point and you should be, should be aware of it, that's all. Okay, I, I see any board member want to make a motion that we should move forward to amend the charter relating to or seek to get information about changing the charter relation to membership. Uh, Justin. Donna, Donna, I'm sorry. Stephen wanted to make a comment and I cut him off. Okay. Steve. So this has been, we've been talking about, we've assigned a committee to, to you know, or a, a board member to work on charter changes. Nothing has happened in six months on this, and now it's make or break time to get charter changes approved by this legislature. We've all acknowledged that we sorely need new members to make this a viable organization. The only way to get new members is to not tax not tax the uh, towns, uh, use, a use a similar, similar arrangement. They just they did this last, last year. Last year. The legislature just changed the, the fiber, the fiber the communication junior district. district to allow select boards to vote in without the whole town voting to get in. So it, it's not rocket science here. And the similar way that the memorandum of understanding that allowed uh, Capital Fire to not pay uh, a share of the costs for the first uh, year or two years uh, could apply to towns as well. Uh, so my point is that if you're going to, if you're if you're not going to allow this thing to to die of attrition for lack of funding and lack of participation and lack of good governance, you're going to have to get some new blood in here. And the only way to do that is by following on the lead that the Communications Union District, that's the way to explain it to the legislature. It's expedient, a public service is being, it's needed, it's needed, it's being expedited, expedited by allowing the select, the select boards, boards to join. To join. And, and then the select boards can, can put, put the, you know, some of the ARPA money or whatever uh, to the town to, to, to their budget process in order to fund the engineering that's needed to get this, these systems up and running. So this is not as complicated as it's being made out. And it's the fact that it's at this late date and that we have a very limited window to get it to the legislature is uh, nobody's fault. Uh, okay, thank fine. you. Okay. 
Uh, any motion from the board? Otherwise, we're going to move forward. Okay, I see no motion from the board. Then uh, any other matters to become before this body before we adjourn? Terrific. We are on time. Thank you all for your focus and contributions. Truly appreciate it. And Justin, and Justin thank, you, thank you for being there. Anytime, anytime. Serious. Serious. Necessary. Yeah. Okay, okay. Night, everyone. Night, everyone. Oh, happy New Year. Forgot that one. <laughs> Our first meeting of the new year. Good night, everybody.